Hi there, my name is Dee Friesen, and I'm a member of the Albuquerque Astronomical Society. I'd like to welcome you to Cosmic Carnival 2020. Cosmic Carnival is brought to you by the Albuquerque Astronomical Society and by our friends at the Open Space Visitor Center. We've done this event for many years live, and of course this year because of the virus, we're having to do it virtually. Nevertheless, we have 15 activities set up for you that you can view during this week here on this website. These activities will actually be available for your uh, viewing until the end of the month. So I will start. My presentation is entitled, Using Your Cell Phone to Navigate the Night Sky. This is a basic uh, introduction as to how you can use your cell phone, whether it's an Android or an Apple, to view what's in the night sky, identify what's in the night sky, and maybe find something that you would like in the night sky. We're going to use a free app. It's called Sky Safari, and it's available for both Android and Apple, and basically works the same. So this is a basic introduction on how to locate and identify objects in the night sky. I'm going to start out by using a sky map, and I will explain that a little bit more to you. It's actually a paper map of the night sky that will help you stay oriented. Then we'll look at how you can use your cell phone. And I've done everything based upon looking at the night sky on Wednesday, November the 11th at 8 p.m. That happens to be the middle week of Cosmic Carnival. Although you can go out a few days before or after, even as much as a week before or after, and the sky will not be that much different. Depending on when you loaded the app, if you already have this app and you've had it for a while, sometimes apps change a little bit. So I've loaded the latest versions of the app on my iPhone, and that's what I will be using. And if things appear to be a little bit different, just delete your app and then download the most current version. I'm making the assumption that if you're interested in this particular presentation, you probably know pretty much about how to use your cell phone, so I don't need to go into a lot of detail on that. And as I mentioned, the app is free and available for both iPhone and Android. If you go to the App Store, this is what it looks like in uh, Apple. It's called Sky Safari. And if you go to the Android Store, this is what it looks like. The, the, the little logos are basically the same. And no matter which platform you use, the basic uh, operating procedures are the same. I will be using an Apple. You will see that in my uh, in the diagrams and slides. But I, my wife has an uh, Android, and I've used it on that, and it works the same. There is a Sky Safari Pro that you may see in the app stores. That is a more sophisticated version of this. You actually have to pay for that. I have it because I use it with my telescopes, but it is not what we'll be using in this presentation. We will be using the free one. So once you get your app on the phone, you simply select it, and it will show up as this kind of a display. You notice I'm holding the phone vertically here, and you'll see the app show up like this. Now, once the app opens, and I've rotated there to see the horizontal view, Let's assume that you are looking north. However, you will notice that the direction in the middle of your screen is south. And if you remove the phone left and right, the display would not change. It's simply the first display that comes up. However, once you press the compass button, now the phone becomes alive. And if I was looking north, it would be looking to the north. So to kind of begin your viewing process, you have to hit the compass button. There's two ways to look at the sky. Here you have a vertical display. And you notice that at the bottom, there is a menu, a number of options, Cosmos, Search, Selection, Settings, Time, Compass. In the vertical mode, I can't see all of those, but I simply can use my fingers. You see the little arrow on the right next to compass and you can slide the menu back and forth. When you rotate the phone to get the horizontal display, now the entire menu comes into view. We will be using most of these menu options 
But I wanted to point out that the cosmos, which is on the left, is not used in this presentation. You have to pay a little bit more money to get that, and it's not applicable to this presentation. Selecting the night view. When the display first comes on, it will appear in a blue view. You'll see the letters are blue, the sky looks dark. Then if you hit the night button, the display will turn to red. And in the night sky, astronomers like to use a red display because what it does is when you go outside, your eyes will dark adapt to the night sky. And if you put a bright light on, you lose some of that dark adaption. But in the red view, you will not lose that. Once you're outside and it's dark and your eyes are a little dark adapted, it's quite comfortable to view in the red or night view. Should you want to go back to the green view, just hit the night button again. You can change the size of the display. If you look on the left, you'll see Saturn and Jupiter close together. Ignore Pluto for a second. Sky Safari shows us that Pluto is there, but you, you will never see it. But you'll notice that they're pretty close together. Now I can change the sky display in two different ways. You notice the little buttons plus and minus there in the yellow box. If I push the plus, it gets bigger. If I push the minus, it gets smaller. Or as you're probably most familiar with your cell phone, just use two fingers and you can spread the display. You notice that on the right display, Saturn and Jupiter have moved much further apart than they are on the left. So that's how you change the size of the sky display. Now, let's observe the actual sky. If you, let's say that you're viewing north and you want to look for Polaris. Polaris is a north star, but because you have the horizon in a little bit below the middle of your display, you won't see Polaris because it's out of the field of view. However, if you simply raise the phone, look higher north, you'll notice that Polaris then is in the field of view. So by moving the phone up and down, left and right, you're going to change what it is that you see. Sometimes the screen can get really cluttered. You notice on the left screen here, I've got both star names and I've got constellation names. There's a way that we can change that. You go to the settings button on the bottom and it will bring up and there you see, uh, it will select settings. There you see it in the vertical view and a settings menu will appear. And on the menu, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can deal with. We're going to deal with stars and we're going to deal with constellations. So let's say I want to adjust the star settings. I select stars and a new menu will appear. And now I have a menu option that says show names. And if I move that button from the right to the left, it will take away the star names. If you look below the star names, you see proper names, which is turned on. When you turn that off to the left, that green part disappears and you just have the white. So if I remove the show, the star names, you'll notice from the top to the bottom how much uncluttered the screen becomes. Star names will disappear. Now I can do the same thing with constellations. I select constellations, a constellation menu appears, and I'd slide that from the right to the left. In this case, it's still on. And once I move from the right to the left, the constellation names will disappear. You've probably figured out that in all of these settings, it brings up another menu and you just go through a series of menus and select what you want. None of this is difficult. And once you play with it a little bit, you'll probably figure it out. Now let's talk about viewing the night sky. We're going to begin by using a sky map. This is a paper map that I'm gonna show you how you can get. And it's useful because it gives you a preview of what you're going to do. And then I'll show you how to use your cell phone. What we have here is the evening sky map. This is a free download. You see the uh, app right here, skymaps.com. And you go to that and it will take you to a website that will enable you to download the map. 
Now here's a full scale picture of that map. And if you want to, you can pause your recording at this time, take a screenshot or whatever you want to do <clears throat> and print out this map. Now let's take a look to the south. I'm going to assume that you have a copy of the map, <coughs> excuse me, and that you're going to be using that to preview what you're going to see with your cell phone. So when you hold the map, you always want to make sure that the direction in which you are viewing is at the bottom of the screen. I'm looking south and so I see south at the bottom. I'm going to see a single bright star called Fomalhaut. Then over to the left, I will see Mars. And over to the right, I will see Jupiter and Saturn. These are the basic things that you're going to see looking to the south. Now let's look at it with your cell phone. First of all, in the horizontal display and then in the vertical display. I want to make sure that I'm looking south. And you see south there in the little white box in the middle of my screen. Then I see the star Fomalhaut, both the vertical and the horizontal. In this particular case, I see Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter, actually Saturn and Jupiter, low and to the right. Mars is just a little bit up and to the left of where it says current location and doesn't show up. But this is what you'll see when you look to the south. Now let's look to the west. We want to make sure that west is the bottom of our chart. You're going to see a bright star called Vega, which is in the constellation Lyra. It looks like a little crooked rectangular box. Above Vega will be a star almost as bright called Deneb, and it's in the constellation Cygnus the Swan. As we look at it right here, it kind of looks like what people sometimes call the Northern Cross. And over to the left, we'll see a third bright star called Altar, and it's in the constellation Aquila the Eagle. So what we have here is Lyra, Deneb, we have Lyra with Vega, Deneb and Cygnus, Altar and Aquila. And those three stars are three constellations, individual constellations. Then the three stars together make up what we call an asterism. An asterism is not a constellation. It's simply a familiar grouping of stars. It can be part of a constellation, like the Big Dipper is to the constellation Ursa Major, or it can be three separate constellations like it is now. But that's the Summer Triangle. Yeah, I know it's November, but the Summer Triangle actually is overhead in the fall, and you'll see it setting in the west this time of year. There's the Summer Triangle. Now, if we look with our cell phone, you can see that we're looking west, and you'll see Lyra, then you'll see Cygnus, and then you'll see Aquila. And there are the three stars of the Summer Triangle. There you see it on the right with the star names and constellations taken away. Here's another view of what you'll see to the west with no star and constellations named. Those three stars are quite bright. You can see those pretty much from the middle of Albuquerque, and they are the Summer Triangle. And they'll be about halfway up, maybe a little bit higher up in the western sky. Now we look to the north. Once again, north at the bottom of our chart. And I can't overemphasize the value of printing this chart out and just using it as a reference. There you see Polaris, the North Star. Polaris will always be in the same location no matter which time of the year it is because it's immediately above, directly above the North Pole and all the stars rotate around it. They go counterclockwise. This little dipper is what Polaris is at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, and you see it there kind of pointing down. There's a pretty easy to identify constellation called Cassiopeia. For us now, it looks like an M. Now, this star chart is made for 40 degrees north latitude, which is where you would be if you were probably in Denver. We're just a little bit further south at 35 degrees, 
So when you go outside, you're going to see the Big Dipper hugging the horizon. It won't be quite as high as this chart shows it, but you can see the green arc there. That's pretty much the horizon in Albuquerque. The rest of it, you won't notice any difference in how it looks. Now we view to the north. We have north, making sure we're looking north. There's Ursa Major, the Little Dipper with Polaris. Ursa Minor, rather. There you see it again in the vertical view. The, the vertical view enables you to expand the screen. You'll notice that Polaris is higher above the horizon in the vertical view than it is in the horizontal. So you may have to flip the phone back and forth to kind of figure out the proper configuration that meets whatever it is you're trying to do. Here's Ursa Minor. And there is Cassiopeia, the M. <coughs> Finally, we'll look to the east. Once again, east at the bottom. And the first thing you're going to notice, almost not quite halfway up, is a small grouping of stars known as the Pleiades. And there's kind of a picture of them. Japanese call them Subaru. And that's actually what the head emblem of the Subaru car looks like. It looks like a little dipper of seven stars. Beneath the Pleiades, you're going to see an orangish yellow star called Aldebaran. It's in the constellation Taurus. And over to the northeast, you're going to find a pretty bright star called Capella, which is in the constellation Arigia. And way up and to the right, you're going to see Mars. This is what you'll see when you look east. The Pleiades is a very small grouping of stars. Beneath that, an orangish yellow star called Aldebaran. And up and to the left, a star called Capella. <coughs> Here you see, viewing to the east, the. Uh, now we're looking to the east. And you'll see that uh, there's east. Uh, shown in the middle of our screen. The Pleiades are kind of hard to see on the horizontal view, a little bit brighter on the vertical view because they've expanded the size. There's Aldebaran, the yellowish white star, kind of the yellowish red color in constellation Taurus. And then we're going to find Capella in the constellation Arigia. And way up high, you're going to find Mars. It's out of view in the vertical view, but you'll see it. It's very easy to see. Mars is quite obvious. There are some other features of Sky Safari that I want to share with you. I want to share with you how to identify an object. You see something in the sky, you don't know what it is, and you'd like to know. Then let's say there's an object that you want to find in the night sky. I will step you through the process of doing both of these. To find, to identify an object, there's kind of two ways that we can do it. First of all, you see the object. In this case, I pressed on it, Polaris. <coughs> I tapped on it. The name comes up, and an eye appears next to it. That tells me that Sky Safari has information about Polaris. So what I want to do is access that information. So if I tap the eye, it will bring up an object information page. A second way that I can do it, I tapped on Polaris. The eye comes up. But now, rather than tapping on the eye, I tap on selection. And that will also bring up the information page. Either way works. Doesn't matter which one you do. OK, so you've tapped it. And here comes the information page. And it talks to us about Polaris. It tells us how bright it is, give you some more information about it. If it was a galaxy, it would talk about the galaxy. Whatever it may be, it's the information about that object. Once you're done reading it, you come over and you select Center. And it will return you to the page to the sky where you were looking at earlier, in this case, Polaris. Now let's say I'm looking for an object. Right now, I am looking to the south, and I want to find Polaris. So what I do is I tap into the search box. Doesn't matter which direction I'm looking. I tap into search. 
Search then comes up with its own menu. It's called the search page. The search page, as you will notice, has a various different kinds of categories, nearest stars, name stars, deep sky objects, messy objects, so forth and so on. In this case, I want to look at Polaris. I know that it's a named star. So I tap on that particular uh, item, named stars. And of course, it brings up a menu of named stars. Now you'll notice that this is an alphabetical menu. The first one is Akamar. And I want to find something else. So what I do is I come down here and I look for the list on the right side. And I want, I know that Polaris is a P. So I tap on the P. And guess what? It takes me to a page where Polaris is. So I, I choose whatever alphabet is closest. You know, I go from B to D is missing, E is there. So you just pick the one that's closest and it will help you reduce the time you need to search. You can scroll all the way down as well, but this is an easier way to do it. So here I have the name stars and I tap on Polaris and it will bring up the information page. Once and again, it tells me where I am. Then I check on the center button and it takes me to Polaris. Now, in order to kind of know where to look, I will look at the boxes in the bottom and this is, okay, it's to the north. I look up and there's Polaris. Okay, this has been a very brief, quick view of how to uh, use your cell phone to look at the night sky. If you have some questions, feel free to ask me, send me an email, text, whatever it may be, and I'll try and help you out. And I thank you for your attention. And this presentation will be available for the rest of the month.